Pleasant morning, everyone, and greetings in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Blessings, blessings, blessings to everyone. And um, if you are logging on wherever you are from, welcome to all my friends and family all over the world. So this is Reverend Daryl coming at you all this morning with a short word of encouragement. And we're going to have a very crucial conversation this morning as we talk about you this morning. Amen. So do me a favor. If you want, you could go ahead and share and like and also tag someone in this live. Because we're going to talk, if you see the heading of this morning's live, it is taken from the book of Psalms 139, reading from verses 14. Okay. Psalms 139, reading from verses 14, and it says, from the New American Standard Bible, it says, I will give thanks to you, because I am awesomely and wonderfully made. Wow. Wonderful are your works, and my soul knows it very well. Amen. Welcome, Kareem. Glad to have you here. And while driving down this morning, the Lord dropped this word into my spirit, taken from Psalms 139 verses 14. And I said to myself, you know what? I have to come out here and release this word to someone that is in need of encouragement, someone that is in need of upliftment, someone that is in need of being reminded that how wonderful and awesome that they are because God created you. And when you read this portion of scripture, welcome Hemant. Happy birthday to you, man. Welcome, Sister Rihanna. Welcome, Apostle. Glad to have you here. Welcome to my wife, Renu. Glad to have you here, honey. And Psalms 139 reminds us that the Lord himself made us. The Lord himself made us awesome and wonderful. Could you imagine the God who created everything in the universe? Every single thing. Plants, human beings, animals, insects, all the stars, all everything that is in the cosmos that we can and we cannot see. Everything that is in operation, God fabricated you and designed you to be awesome. I want you to put that in the chat. Say, I am awesome. And I am wonderfully made by God. You see, many people today, the enemy has bombarded their mind and they do not understand their identity. They do not understand that they are a child of God, that they are wonderfully and fearfully made by God. So they are walking around, do not understand and cannot even fathom the God that created them. God that took his time, his effort, his energy to fabricate you and to make you. Do you know that there are almost 8 billion people, not million people, 8 billion people around the world and you have a very unique print, fingerprint? Do you know that there is nobody like you on the face of the earth? Man, that is something to give God praise. That is something to give God glory. Because for far too long, people are running around, living their life, not understanding their true identity, not understanding, according to Psalms 139, that they are awesome. That's it, honey. You are awesome. That's it, Sister Rihanna. You are awesome. That's it, Apostle Man. You are awesome. You are awesome. And when you read the New American Standard Version. When I read that portion of scripture, I was blown away. Because here you hear God calling you awesome and wonderful. Awesome and wonderful. When last did you say to yourself, look yourself in the mirror and said, man, I am awesome. Woman, I am wonderful and fearfully made by God. Because yes, we see where the enemy has been trying to rob many people of their identity and they do not feel good in their own skin. There are many people, listen, welcome Keisha, glad to have you all, glad to have you here. And yes, you are awesome. You are a child of the Most High God. 
many people do not understand that they are a unique being they are wonderfully and fearfully made by God and the enemy have stolen a lot of people's identity that's that's a reality for you instead of being a victor many people are walking around as a victim they do not understand that the God had created every single thing fabricated down to the very hair of their of their head God has numbered the very hair of your head so do not let anybody I'm encouraging somebody out here never let anyone put you down don't let anyone it may be your parent it may be your significant other it may be a friend it may be a co-worker man you are fearfully you are awesome and you are wonderfully made by God not for a second doubt your uniqueness and your genuineness the acronym for you Y O U. you you know I, I was reading John Maxwell and he says Y O U you means your own uniqueness your own uniqueness and you are unique your thumbprint your fingerprints it is your unique your DNA it is unique so do not let anybody put you down child of God do not let anybody put you down man and woman of God you have a uniqueness about you that transcends the universe because when God looks at you God sees a unique being God sees his divine work God sees a finished product you are a finished product yes we all have scars yes we all have you know when we look at ourselves in the mirror man I need to have a bigger six-pack I need to have more muscles I should be more clearer I should be more skinny I should not be so fat and that is where the enemy will take you out because instead of rejoicing in what God has done for you the enemy has come in now and robbed many people and they start to question their uniqueness they start to look at themselves as not being perfect in the eyes of God when God looks at you God sees perfection God sees a finished product God sees a work in progress and I'm here to remind you Facebook and all my friends around the world that God looks at you he sees his very own he sees a child of the king come on you are awesome and the psalmist says in Psalms 139 I will give thanks to you I want to say that to you Facebook you ought to give God thanks you ought to give God thanks it could have been worse it could have been worse there are many people that was born and they have cerebral palsy they are born and they cannot move they are born and then and, and in at their birth they die that still birth there are many people now in a bed of affliction there are many people right now who cannot hear properly they are in need of mega surgery but listen if you have all your five senses sight touch hear feel and smell man you ought to give God praise and the psalmist David he was saying unto himself I listen to the psalmist David I will give thanks unto you God you know when we wake up in the morning our very first thing should do when we put our foot onto our floor is to put our hands in the air and say God I give you praise God I give you glory God I give you honor to see another day to see another day listen child of God you you ought to give God thanks you know you ought to give God thanks because you are not here by chance God designed you and you will accomplish your divine destiny on the earth and David was reminding himself David was building up himself David was encouraging himself that I will give God thanks when you look yourself in the mirror yes as I said you may see imperfection you may see some gray hair man I'm seeing some gray hair coming out I'm seeing some gray hair coming out and we all would want things to be different there's something about us we will want change 
But David had it right, you know. David had it right. David said, I will give thanks to you, God, because I am awesome and wonderfully made. I am awesomely and wonderfully made. And I want to release that word over you this morning that you are awesome. Every single time you look at the mirror, look and say, man, I'm a champion. I am a winner. I am an overcomer. I am God's best. Child of God, daughter of God, son of God, you are God's best. You are God's best. Don't let anyone speak negative over your life. Come on now. There's family, friends, relatives. There are people who you know in your inner circle that will look at you and they will judge you. They will, they will prejudice you. They will say all manner of things about you. But you know what the psalmist David says? That he ought to give God praise and thanks. When I look at myself, I see myself as a champion. I see myself as an overcomer. I see myself as a distributor of God's wealth. What are you seeing yourself at this morning? Come on. Don't let that devil, don't let that lying devil speak negative over your life. And come and play into your mind and into your soul. And if you read that portion of scripture, Psalms 139, David in the New American Standard Bible, the very last part of that scripture, it says, Wonderful are your works and my soul. Wow, look at that. And my soul knows it very well. Wow, David was building himself up. And he was reminded himself in the Lord that even my soul, and my apostle, he always says what? Your soul is made up of your mind, your will, and your emotion. So David was even speaking and prophesying. Come on. David was prophesying to himself. And my soul knows it very well. I want you to begin to prophesy over your life. Prophesy over your soul. Prophesy over your soul. What is your soul? Your mind? Your will? And your emotions. Yes, the devil at times and friends and family at times will put us down and make us feel inferior. Have you ever felt inferior before? Have you ever felt as though you are not worthy? Have you ever felt as though you are not worth it? Have you had someone speak at you in such a tone and such a manner that if the ground was open up, you would just jump into the ground? I have been there. I have been there. I have been there. And I'm sure many of you all can relate. Don't let anybody put you down. I want to re encourage you before I go. Don't let any person put you down. Because when God sees you, He sees a finished product. That's it. When God sees you, Sister Rihanna, He sees His best. When God sees you, he sees a champion. When God sees you, He sees an overcomer. So read back that Psalm, Psalms 139 verses 14. And remind yourself. Sometimes you have to prophesy to yourself, you know. Sometimes you have to take up the word of God. And you have to speak life into every dead situation. You have to speak life into, into every Every part of your being, the enemy will come and bombard your soul. I am not good enough. I am not worthy. Man, I should be more thinner. That's how the enemy works. The enemy doesn't want you to see the blessing. He always wants this for you to see the challenges, the situations. So you are an overcomer, daughter of God. You are an overcomer, child of God. And your soul... There are times when you are down, pick up yourself, because if you can look up, you can get up. If you can look up, you can get up. That devil will want to put you down and lock you down. And You ever see where a python, how a python restricts its predator and its prey? That predator restricts that prey. Have you ever gone to the zoo? You know, we went to the zoo recently, my wife and the boys. And we were watching how, they, how these boa constrictors, they restrict 
and they and they press down and they stifle their prey that is what the enemy is doing to a lot of people in this season the enemy is not making people look at what god and how god has brought them and look at their genuineness and their uniqueness the enemy will try to put you down he will say man your nose big your eyes chinky your ears too wide your skin color should have been clearer that's how the enemy works and then now you start looking at yourself as being inferior maybe some of you may have had a child and you put on some weight man your significant other should have hugged that up and loved that up i am telling you when you look at your children don't say to your son or your daughter don't put down your child i've heard many parents put down their child when i look at my sons i always encourage them i say sons you are an overcomer you are a bright child you are a bright boy encourage your children because you don't know one negative word the enemy could put that as a seed into their, into their soul and they grew up and they grew up feeling inferior never let people put down your children never let people ill speak your children never let people ill speak your spouse come on people have to be mad to say anything about my spouse because i'm a bulldog when it comes to my family they know that people who know reverend daryl and prior to me being ordained i was a bulldog my loyalty is a thousand percent my commitment is a thousand percent that's it my loyalty my commitment is a thousand percent my accountability is a thousand percent and if i'm with you back to back i have your back and that is what we need in society today we need people to stop gossiping and stop old talking and stop complaining and stop slandering and stop backbiting people there is too much of gossip too much of old talk happening where people are pulling down people instead of uplifting their family instead of uplifting their children instead of uplifting their husband they're pulling them down there are many husbands that are hurting because wives refuse to uplift and commend their husbands there are many husbands that are that are stressed out you all don't know there are many husbands that are stressed out they work in i know there are some some deadbeat fathers and deadbeat husbands i know that but there are good husbands out there and some significant other will never uplift them ask them how did they go in honey how was your day on your job how was your day there are many wives that are in their closets that are in their in their rooms crying because the husband never took the time to ask honey how you're doing we need to uplift each other facebook we need to uplift our wives uplift uplift our husbands uplift our children uplift our families because let me tell you something with this covid 19 pandemic it has brought a lot of people into isolation it has brought a lot of people to look at themselves as, as not being god's best uplift each other be an uplifter this morning be an encourager this morning stop gossiping come on stop complaining stop entertaining slander stop entertaining when people tell you you are not worthy you are not worth it because you are worthy and you are worth all that god has in store for you i challenge you this morning facebook anytime you hear people talking negative say listen wrong address devil people don't come around me with negative you know my wife is on this on this life she will tell you they do not come around daryl with negatives why they understand my position when it is i dislike negatives i don't like when people pull down others i will treat the janitor the same way i will treat treat a ceo of a company I will treat you the same way I am in church. 
in my business, in my job, if I see you outside, I will treat you the same way. Money doesn't motivate me. Come on. Your status in society doesn't move me. You should not be intimidated by any person that has money and that has status. Why? Man, when God looks at me, when God looks at you, he sees royalty. When God looks at you, Sister Lynn, he sees royalty. When God looks at you, Sister Renu, he sees royalty. When God looks at you, Sister Keisha, God sees royalty. So don't let anybody Facebook pull you down. Don't let anybody mock you. Don't let anybody pull you down into a ditch and into a hole. And now you start questioning yourself. I am not worth it. No. Look at what Psalms 139 says. David was saying, I will give thanks. I will give thanks. I will give thanks. Because I am awesomely and wonderfully made by God. Amen. So this is just a short word of exhortation to everyone out there to remind you, child of God, don't let anybody pull you down. Do like David and encourage yourself. Do like David and remind yourself that you are a champion, you are a winner, you are an overcomer, you are royalty. Don't let anybody else speak you. Bind and pull those words down. I'll end that by saying, Anybody releasing curse words over you, anybody releasing negatives over you, your husband, your wife, your children, your home, your finances, your business, your job, bind it, pull it down, and cast it out in the name of Jesus. Come on. I feel the anointing of God. Bind those words, pull it down, and cast it out in the name of Jesus. Every word. I release a prophetic word over your life this morning. Every word, curse, every person that would have ever pulled you down and made you feel inferior and made you feel as though you are not worth it. By the Spirit of God, by the anointing of God, we bind it right now with chains of fire. We pull it down and we cast it out of your life, out of your mind, out of your soul, out of your children, out of your home, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. It shall not stand, neither shall it come to pass over your life, says Almighty God. Amen. If you receive this word, if you receive this word of encouragement, like, share, and send it some, to someone who needs to be reminded that you are God's best, you are worthy, you are royalty, and when God looks at you, he sees his very own, which means that you are his best. Amen. God bless you, Facebook. I hope that you received this word of encouragement. I hope that this word uplifted you this morning. You are a child of God, and you are God's best. Amen. So go back and read through Psalms 139, and let that word simmer into your spirit. And let God reveal his word even unto you this morning. Amen. It's overcast in Trinidad. Amen. So have a fantastic Saturday everyone. God bless you. And see you all soon. Amen. Take care.